Hello everyone, welcome to ET Studios, and today we're having a look at the Stormbreaker from Ender on the Workshop. This is a brilliant little ship, and we're going to be having a look at it, having a look at its design, and giving it a bit of a test fly as well. Of course, this ship will be linked in the description below for you to download, and it's available on the PC side of the workshop. I'm not sure about the console side yet. They're still working on that whole modeling thing. Anyway, let's have a look and see. We've got a fairly similar design philosophy to the other ESC ships that he's put on the workshop. So it's definitely part of that kind of organization and you can definitely see the design coming through. And the color scheme is of course still the same gray and blue as it has been. So let's read what he said on the workshop page. We have it. It is an agile and heavily armored attack ship, which is one of the most common warships in the Indarian Navy. It is survival ready and tested on servers, thrust damage compatible, which are pretty cool. So let's have a look. We've got three frontal rocket launchers, four missile turrets, eight Gatling turrets, eight interior turrets, four jump drives, two oxygen generators, one large hydrogen tank, five small hydrogen tanks, one large reactor, four small reactors, and ten batteries. It's completely vanilla and does have DLCs required if you want to use them, although I don't think they're actually needed inside. I don't have one of them and it did say that I'd need it, but let's have a look. It's probably just something cosmetic. I doubt it's required to keep the structural integrity. So running through the design here, we've got some pretty cool things. Uh, obviously this section of the ship looks to be um, not fully pressurized but on the inside here I think it is um, so that's pretty cool well maybe it's not actually maybe the inside isn't quite pressurized but that's okay it's not really a thing you need yeah definitely not pressurized on the inside here but that's okay um, so we have airlock there okay so it, it's cool we've got a nice little interior there's not a huge amount inside um, We've got our reactors and jump drives nicely stacked back here. We've got a beacon, our control station, and then our oh, airlock on that side as well. I don't think there's any more to the interior of this. No. So it's a very small ship in terms of the interior. You'd think it could be a little bit bigger, but there's a lot of functionality built into this thing, and I think it's quite fast. So we'll have a look at that in a second. Obviously we've got all those turrets as mentioned before, and it's definitely got plenty of space for weapons. We've got three forward firing rocket launchers over here, which if you're playing in a modded server perhaps, you could throw in your modded weapons. And behind here are conveyors so they'd be able to be hooked up to whatever you need. So that's quite cool and definitely helpful to have. So let's hop inside and see what we've got to work with. So it was pressurized in there. I doubt it's actually pressurized in here. We'll see. So let's hop in the seat and give a quick acceleration test. Alright, that's decent. It's not super fast, but it's definitely fast enough. Let's try stopping. Feels very similar. So that's good. You don't want a ship that stops too much slower than it speeds up. And we don't have a huge amount of hydrogen fuel on board, I don't think. We've only got that one big hydrogen tank, so probably want to conserve that a little bit for general operation, but I mean, you can turn it on for combat. And I mean, being space engineers, once you've got up to speed, you don't really mind if you're traveling to places. And then you can turn on these hydrogen engines for combat. So, forward firing, very nice, and then obviously we've got all our turrets and jump drive systems as well. We've got a nice camera, all just above the rocket launchers, that's very nice to have. Always lovely to have a direct forward view on the camera. And yeah, I, I really like the design, I love these little like X-wing sort of S-foils that come up here. They're not rotatable or anything like that, but it's a very cool thing to add to the design. There's no weapons or anything on them, but it's nice to have, and I think... Are those decoys in there? That would make a lot of sense. There we go, okay, cool. So, 
in theory your enemies will target the outside of these and it would be a lot better for you because then they're not going to hit anything close to your actual hull. Which is very nice and a very cool addition. Definitely makes the craft stand out a bit. So he also mentions that it's a space only warship isn't meant for planetary operations and I can see that being the case. There's not too many hydrogen thrusters underneath it so I don't think it could hold itself up in atmosphere. And he says there are two landing gear underneath there, you can see them at the back just below the thrusters. And those are for towing things on, uh, well, in space. And that makes a lot of sense, you don't need something that can go to a planet's surface. Um, well, if you do then this isn't the ship for you, but if you, you don't always need it. And I can see this being part of a fleet like it is meant to be, this is part of an actual fleet of ships. Some of which will be able to go to a planet's surface and if you need it to go you would use one of those. So yeah, we're going to give it a quick crash test and I think we'll probably use an asteroid for that considering it's supposed to be a space only vessel. So let's see how well it survives. Not really the greatest test for space engineers because every crash is a bit different but always fun to do and um, way to end off an episode. I'm not going to do any proper combat with this because that really depends on what you're fighting. But I really like this design, it's a very unique little ship and definitely something worth using, plenty of weapons, and seems very easily uh, modifiable if you wanted to put modded weapons on it, like I said before. So yeah, let's fly into this asteroid ahead. I'd also like to just plug my new Patreon, which has recently been released, and if you'd like to support the channel that would be absolutely fantastic, and I'm going to leave it at that. If you know what Patreon is, then it'll be in the description below. If not, that's alright. And uh, then just keep watching the videos if you want to support the channel. But otherwise, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for watching, and goodbye.